Yeah? What is it? Um, it's definitely some kind of Magellan one. Like a trap door or something? Oh, what's weird? Oh, it's fast. It's fast. Hold oh, on. Wow. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. There's the leaves here. Where'd it go? That thing looked weird. What the heck was that? Really odd looking. There it is, there it is, right here. Oh, yeah, it's a good, good spot, good spot. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, good What catch. is that? I don't know, dude. Let me see. Yeah? It's not a trap door, I don't think. Dude, it looks like a funnel web. Look at the spinnerets on that thing. The mountains of southern Arizona are one of the most unique habitats on the planet. The dry, cool climate attracts strange creatures that live their secretive lives thousands of feet above the deserts below. You're probably thinking, wait a second, you found a funnel web, right? What the heck is that doing in Arizona? And that's the exact question I was asking myself looking at this unusual spider. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and in my search for some of the strangest and deadliest secrets of the natural world, I've come to Arizona in search of giant centipedes. The cooler climate of the mountains is much more hospitable to these terrifying subterranean beasts, and that brings us up to higher elevations, flipping cover for unusual arthropods. But centipedes aren't the only terrors that call this place home. There are spiders up here too, and it turns out this strange spider we flipped has more than just a passing resemblance to the deadly Australian megalomorph spiders. What we're looking at here is known as a curtain web spider. And this is as close to a Sydney funnel web as it gets here in the US. These guys are quite closely related to the deadly funnel webs down under. This wasn't on our radar at all coming here to Arizona. We, we thought we'd see like trap doors. I mean, that's when, when we flipped this, we know purse webs aren't out here. So my first guess was some kind of trap door, but those, those spinnerets on the back, they hinted that it was something different. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually try and handle this spider. So it might seem like a bad idea to hold this spider in my bare hand. If it's related to the Sydney funnel web, surely it's deadly, right? Well, one of the biggest lessons I've learned while studying some of the world's deadliest creatures is that oftentimes their reputations aren't totally accurate. From the cotton mouths of North American swamps to the wandering spiders of South American jungles, I've seen that by and large, even the most venomous wildlife are just simple creatures trying to make their way in the universe, just like us. But I know better than to underestimate the Australian funnel webs. In order to be ready to capture one of those deadly arachnids, I need to study the behavior of their closest relatives so I can learn what to expect when I'm face to face with the real thing. I've seen the comments. In just a few months, I'll be heading down to Australia for the first time ever in search of one of the world's deadliest spiders. And to be ready to face that massive challenge, I need to handle the curtain web. So if you're ready, I think, it's time. Okay, so seems like she's not too aggressive or keen to escape. Look at that. Okay. So she actually, look at that. She's going right for shade. Whoa, look at her webbing my hand up there. Those, those spinnerets there, those huge spinnerets are actually perfect for the kind of messy funnel webs they build under logs. Where they get their name curtain webs from is because these just these sheets of webs all over. And I don't think that she's doing this because she's comfortable. I think she's mostly just doing it to kind of mark where she's been and to have a little bit of a safety line if she were to fall. I wonder if these are climbers. She seems pretty adept at climbing, very light bodied spider, and her feet are very grippy on my skin there. So I wonder if these guys are climbing the rocks and stuff, searching for prey if they come out of their burrows. I'm not, again, everything I'm saying here is totally speculation. We know very, very little about the curtain web spiders. Some of the species that we have studied seem to prefer to eat snails, but we have seen exactly zero snails on this mountain. We didn't see any snail shells or anything in that little nest there. So I don't think that's what she's eating. What they're probably doing is sitting in wait in that layer underneath logs and rocks and stuff. And those 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 curtains that kind of extend like a mess all over probably have trip wires that extend outside. So if a little insect or snail or millipede or isopod 
is kind of bumbling about and trips that wire, she can come out and snag it. Her fangs aren't super long from what I can see. I haven't been able to get her to threat pose or anything. I don't think this is a very aggressive or passionately defensive spider. They seem to be just very secretive and prefer to be under their cover. Now, looking very closely, they have tiny, tiny little eyes in the front of their cephalothorax there. So I'd have to wager they don't have very good vision. Most, most megalomorphs don't. She probably just can tell she's exposed, it's a bit windy, it's bright. There really aren't any wind clouds most days in Arizona. So, you know, she can tell she's exposed and she's not too happy about it. But if you look, as long as she's in the shadow of my arm here, she's quite content to just sit there. As soon as she's in the light, she's scurrying all over. But in that shade, she's just sitting there. And what's interesting is, look at how she can just kind of grip on there. That's something I don't see very often with, with megalomorphs, especially here in the U.S. Like, like down in South America and stuff, you see a lot more arboreal tarantulas and things, things that are that are built to climb, right? But the megalomorphs we have here in the U.S. are very subterranean. Trapdoors, they live in burrows. Purse webs live in burrows. Our tarantulas live in burrows. And this was found under under a log in a burrow. But it seems like either it's because of the spider's light body or because it's a montane species, it seems like they have some ability to climb. Probably one of the weirdest spiders I think I've ever come across. And the truth is, I have no idea if it's dangerous or not. I, I don't really plan on testing the bite. I can find hardly any observation records of this spider in the US. They seem to be isolated to very, very remote mountainous areas and their reclusive nature means we just don't see them very often. Quite a very special find. This is the kind of stuff that I get excited about because it's like, it looks like a funnel web. It looks deadly. It looks scary, right? But it's also really, really strange, really poorly understood and something that quite literally is a secret of the natural world. Arizona wilderness is truly home to some of the most unique life forms in the United States. Its arid climate creates a special challenge, but as we know, life finds a way. And it gets much weirder than this curtain web spider. After dark during the monsoons, there are some true oddities that crawl out of the woodwork. If you want to explore deeper into the secrets of the desert and get up close and personal with one of the weirdest arachnids in the world, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.